Hi, my name is Peter Houston and I'm Senior Director for Identity and Access Management here at Microsoft. And today I'm here to talk about our Identity Lifecycle Manager product that we've released here at the RSA Show. In particular, we've released a product called Identity Lifecycle Manager 2007 and it's focused on combining our meta directory technologies that were previously called Microsoft Identity Integration Server with some assets we acquired when we bought the Alacris Corporation in 2005. In particular, MIS gives us a meta directory capability and user provisioning and when we combine that with the Alacris technology we add the ability to manage strong authentication which means certificates and in particular smart cards. So we're bringing these two things together in a way that makes it easy for a user to create provisioning and deprovisioning systems where we not only uh, manage our users uh, rights and access and so forth but we add the ability to manage strong credentials along with that. So when a user is added to a company they are provisioned into systems such as the uh, uh, ERP system or the HR system given access rights to various things but at the same time we can also give them their smart card and uh, when they leave the company we can revoke the smart card and in the middle where they are doing their jobs if they forget their smart card uh, one day we can provision them with a temporary card and if they need to do things like reset their pin we give them a self reset capability so we think the right thing to do here is to bring together lifecycle management along with strong credential management and bring those two things together into a single technology and again we're calling that identity lifecycle manager 2007 and it will be available uh, approximately the beginning of May. But we're also announcing our roadmap for Identity Lifecycle Manager and in particular we're going to have a second release of the product coming out in approximately the second half of 2008. And this product is going to do a number of things for us, in particular three, three things. First, it's going to empower information workers to manage their own identities. Second, it's going to offload IT professionals while enabling them to remain in control. And third, it's going to improve operational efficiency. And let me give you some examples of each of those. So first, empowering information workers. Today, when an information worker forgets their password, they have to call the help desk. If they want to create an email group, for example, they have to call the help desk. They have to call the help desk for almost anything that they need to do when it comes to managing their identities. But with this product, we're going to enable help the information worker to do a lot more self-management. So for example, if they forget their password, on the login screen there will be a reset password button and if they answer a certain number of questions correctly they'll be given the chance to reset their own password. If they want to do things like create an email group they'll be able to do that directly from something like uh, 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 Outlook 2007 so they're creating an email they realize that they need to do a group right on the uh, Outlook 2007 ribbon there will be a group management I guess tab which will let you do things like create and, and join and depart and manage groups. So right there where the information worker expects it, where they're doing their job, they can have the ability to manage groups. In the past, what you would have had to do is either call the help desk or go work at, or find and use some portal for group management or password reset. And we find that users don't actually use those facilities because they have different user experiences and oftentimes they're hard to find. Now, second, I mentioned the ability to offload IT professionals while enabling them to stay in control. So, if we take our password example from the previous uh, discussion, in this case, the user is enabled to, to reset their password, but the IT pro stays in control of things like how strong does that password have to be. For group management, the user, again, enables, is enabled to create their own groups, but the IT professional stays in control because they set policies on those groups. So for example, how often are they going to expire? In a lot of companies, if you don't manage things like that, you'll find that you'll end up with more groups than you will people. So it's very important for the IT pro to stay in control of things like that. Also, we're enabling them to do things like develop the business rules for granting access to various resources. So instead of having to work all this manually, the IT professional can do things like say that if a person is in this role then they should be given access to these three things and do that all very uh, much in an automated fashion through a very powerful business rule language that we're going to be developing for this product. And then finally, improving operational efficiency. It's very relatively simple. 
I can do things like offload my help desk, where I've had a lot of uh, volumes of calls from all these other things in the past. I can improve efficiency through uh, automating processes that used to be manual. And third, this is a great way to simplify your compliance problem. So for example, in this product, we're going to be writing business rules about who gets access to what resources and why and when. Well, that's what compliance is all about. So we're able to do things like capture the business rules. We're able to do things like capture the data so when a user is added to the system or deprovisioned from the system, as we would say, then uh, you can automatically uh, look in your log data and write reports against it, and now you have a very, very nice uh, source of uh, compliance information. So those are the three pillars, if you will, or themes of this release. And as I mentioned, it will be coming out in approximately uh, the second half, early second half of 2008. And we're just calling that ILM version 2 at this point. Thank you very much for listening, and we appreciate the chance to tell you about Identity Lifecycle Manager.